Well, Alicia, fire departments and EMS providers have really had to depend on mutual aid agreements to make up for those staffing shortages. Right here in Rochester Hills, there were points where they were putting fire inspectors on engines just so they had enough personnel to respond to calls. After more than 30 years in the fire service, John Lyman hung up his helmet for a communications role at the Rochester Hill Fire Department. His sideline position and experience give him a bird's eye view of Oakland County's entire emergency response operation. When I hired in the 80s, we had 300 people apply for a couple positions. Well, now we've got many positions open across the county here and we're getting trickled in applications. Rochester Hills used to only hire firefighters who doubled as paramedics, but finding men and women with that kind of training is a huge challenge in 2021. We are hiring people as non-paramedics EMTs and then sending them on to paramedic school uh, to get their, their training that way. I've been in EMS uh, for over 35 years, and this is the worst I've ever seen it. Ron Slagle is the president and CEO of Huron Valley Ambulance. He says the EMS system is near collapse. For more than 20 years, companies like his have accepted fixed funding through Medicaid and Medicare. Neither even come close to covering the cost of operation. The challenge is, unlike other businesses, we can't just raise our rates to recoup more money to pay our employees. Uh, our rates are pretty much fixed by all the payers that provide into the system. According to salary.com, Detroit paramedics earn an average of about $39,000 a year. Their shifts can range anywhere from 24 to 72 hours. When they come to us and they say, I'm leaving, it's hard. I can't blame them. You know, it's, it's I can't. Dr. Christine Brent is the director of the University of Michigan's EMS Fellowship Program. She says over the course of the pandemic, paramedics have been forced to observe, quote, constant death, and many of them simply have hit a breaking point. Unless we do something to address this shortage, it's going to come to a point where when we call 911, no one's coming. No one's coming for an hour, and an hour is way too late for most of the stuff that we deal with. And when it comes to responding first, every second counts. That can be a life and death, you know, affect here. Staffing affects response times, it affects patient care, it, is, it affects uh, firefighting. Well, there is an increase in funding in this year's state budget to help uh, fund EMS providers. And they say this is a start towards a more permanent solution. But in the meantime, thank your local first responders, the ones that keep showing up because they are working lots of overtime now. Live in Rochester Hills, I'm Alex Bozargian, 7 Action News.